Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you an unboxing plus on feet video of the brand new Adidas F50 Adi Zero My Coach 3 in leather in the brand new Samba Pack colorway. So here is a look at what you get inside the box. All they include are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras. So I'll get this box out of the way. And if you guys could take a quick second to leave a like on the video, it would be greatly appreciated. So here is a look at the leather upper variation of the brand new F50 Adi Zero. For those of you wondering, the launch Samba Pack blue color was available in leather for the F50 Adi Zero, but not in North America. It was only a European release, um, which is why it took me so long to get a pair. But if you are interested in getting some of these for yourself, I do have a very reputable online UK based retailer links down below in the description it's the same place where I got my pair um, and they do have very fair shipping to the rest of the world if you are interested in getting a pair of these for yourself again the link to that can be found down below in the description but as far as the leather F50 Adi Zero goes this time around obviously Adidas has really made a push for the synthetic model which is dramatically improved and in, in my opinion is the best F50 Adi Zero we've ever seen since its original release in 2010 I'll leave an annotation on screen to one of those videos if you want to check it out as well as a link in the description to the review page on my website now right off the bat there is obviously a visual difference going from the synthetic to the leather model um, obviously there's leather at the front this particular colorway features a speed foil midfoot um, and depending on the colorway I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the blackout and whiteout colorways this midfoot material is actually going to be different videos on both those colorways coming very very soon so stay tuned for that um, in terms of graphics because of the transition going from a leather material to a synthetic material they didn't want to put the stripes over this seam so they've been pushed back to the midfoot on the boot where in comparison you guys can see the synthetic model right there is more towards the front so obviously there's a uh, fairly dramatic difference in terms of the visuals going from the synthetic to the leather and then also because this is the Samba pack colorway there's also some differences in the Samba elements of the shoe it has the same blue color as a base the same orange laces but you can see that the tongue does not feature the Samba pack coloring with the pink and orange stripes and you're also not going to get that Samba pack pattern there on the liner whereas instead the liner is a solid orange material and that's because it's it's actually a different material altogether but other than that you can see that all of the rest of the elements on the shoe visually are very very similar if not the same depending on what you're looking at now as far as the upper itself goes it's made out of two different parts and to me I, I can't say that I'm particularly impressed with what Adidas has done with the leather upper variation this time around uh, to me they took a step back from the previous model which was really the only true leather Adi Zero that we ever got and that pretty much the entire midfoot forefoot toe box area was actually made from leather whereas this time around you can see they've gone back a step in terms of the amount of leather that you're actually getting on the shoe it hardly goes past the first lace hole as you can see and cuts off pretty much right at the forefoot transitioning to an extremely different um, speed foil material that is much thinner and much less padded than the leather here at the front. The leather is a Golio calfskin leather so exactly what we've seen from the past versions of the Adi Zeros and in terms of quality and thickness again it's pretty much right on par. It's a decent thickness, it's a decent quality, the problem here is just that there isn't enough of it. The tongue itself is pretty much all speed foil up until the edge here where there is a little piece of leather that's just for comfort reasons and then like I said the rest of the shoe is made from an ultra thin speed foil which to me doesn't make for the best material through the midfoot in that it's yes very lightweight and yes very stable but it's not very flexible it's fairly rigid and when you put it on feet and I'll talk about this later in the on foot portion of the video there's a noticeable difference in feel transitioning from the soft flexible leather to a very firm and slightly stiff feeling speed foil material of course I haven't really broken the shoes in yet I've just tried them on so I'm not sure if that's going to change or not but for right now um, I noticed that there definitely is an awkward feel transitioning in the shoe where it switches from leather to synthetic. Now the Speedfoil synthetic material, if you don't know already, is a new synthetic from Adidas. It's mainly designed as a support material and that's how it's used on the synthetic model. But obviously on this colorway of the leather upper variation, it's used as somewhat of a touch material as well. And that you have a mesh base on the shoe that really doesn't do much in terms of feel. And then pretty much a clear 
kind of TPU plastic, very thin layer of material to cover it up to make up the speed foil material. Um, and that's really how it's made. The entire tongue is also made from speed foil as well. So like I said, you're getting a nice padded feel here at the toe box area. And then the midfoot and top of the foot is gonna offer an extremely thin, much less padded feel with that speed foil synthetic. Central lacing system, as you can see, the exact same cut in the heel area. Um, the heel liner is a synthetic suede as opposed to a smooth synthetic leather, which I think is a, a better material overall than the synthetic leather used on the synthetic upper variation. But again, I'm not really complaining about what we have on the synthetic upper variation. And in terms of insoles, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you only get one insole and it comes with the comfort insole with the synthetic suede liner on top. You can see you got your Adi Zero branding there on the heel and it's pretty much the new comfort insole layout and that's slightly thicker foam and just feels better quality overall. Um, nothing to complain about whatsoever. It's also fairly lightweight considering how comfortable it actually is. Now moving on to the sprint frame, it does have the exact same sprint frame design as a synthetic model. You can see that Adidas has reverted back to the rounded heel counter as opposed to the more kind of uh, linear, uh, I want to say geometric shape that they had on the previous versions or the last couple versions of the Adi Zero. Again, no real big difference in performance or, or feel whatsoever. And then moving on to the outsole, you have your one piece outsole with your triangular studs here in the heel, your my coach slot in the middle, and then the new stud pattern here in the forefoot made up of kind of these different shaped triangular studs they are more bladed shaped. And in terms of performance, to me, they're dramatically better than what we've seen from all past Adi Zeros. And I have to say, I'm a really big fan of how this shoe performs in terms of traction and just grip in all types of playing conditions. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as the unboxing portion of this video. And move on next to a quick weigh in so you can see how lightweight these guys are. Just like past models of the F50 Addy Zero, the leather model does weigh a little bit more than the synthetic version, but again, it's not a huge difference. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw it on the scale and you can see that these guys weigh in at 6.7 ounces, which in comparison to the synthetic model is about an ounce more. Now, is this a major difference in terms of the overall feel of the shoe? In hand, I would say that you can notice a slight difference between the two. On feet, it's a lot harder to tell. I think that the one difference and the one thing that the synthetic model has going for it is that it has a tighter fit overall. So because of that, it feels more responsive, which leads to a more lightweight feel. But either way, whether you go for the synthetic or the leather version of the F50 Adi Zero, you're gonna get an extremely lightweight feel from your shoes. Now with that being said, let's move on to a quick on feet so you can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and what the sizing is like. All right, here's a look at the leather Addy Zeros on feet. And my general first impression of these in terms of how they feel is that they don't feel bad, but they don't necessarily feel great either. Um, there's a super noticeable transition going from the soft leather to the fairly rigid and stiff speed foil material. Like I mentioned earlier, speed foil I think was originally designed as something that was going to be used as more of a support material rather than something that was going to be based around making contact with the ball and providing a nice touch. It's very thin, so I'm not really too worried about the type of touch you're gonna get. I'm not sure how much feel is gonna come through, but in terms of making it the entire midfoot, it, feels very stiff and very rigid. It's almost kind of squeezing your foot and it's not uncomfortable, but it's not necessarily all that pleasant either. Again, only time will tell once I've worn the shoes that's really going to determine how it's really gonna play out. But from right out of the box, it definitely doesn't feel as good as the synthetic model does. You're also gonna notice that it kind of buckles right here on both sides of the ankles. And that's not due to a poor fit, that's due to the speed foil material just being too rigid. You can see if I push it in, it just kind of pops back out. And that's just because it's a very plasticky type of material and there's really nothing you can do to prevent it. The fit I have here is pretty much perfect. There's no extra space in the shoe and they're tied up as tight as they can go. It's just something that is caused due to the rigidity of the speed foil synthetic itself. In terms of width, it's not very wide at all. I would say it's actually fairly tight through the midfoot, even a little bit tighter than the synthetic model 
due to the stiffness and lack of flexibility to the speed foil synthetic itself whereas in the four foot and toe box you have plenty of wiggle room due to the softness of the leather and just because of how soft it is i'm sure you will get some decent stretching out of it as well but for the most part it does have a slightly unusual fit and that it's fairly snug through the midfoot and a lot wider in the forefoot and toe box area. In terms of sizing, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to get a pair of these for yourself, I would definitely recommend going true to size. So that's pretty much it as far as the on-feet portion of this video, and I'll leave you to my final thoughts. All right guys, that's it for my unboxing of the Leather F50 Addy Zero My Coach 3. I definitely have some concerns regarding this particular shoe, mainly the speed foil synthetic material running through the midfoot of the boot. It just doesn't have an ultra premium feel, and I can't say I'm particularly pleased with Adidas once again cutting down on the amount of leather we get on the Leather Addy Zero. There just isn't enough on this shoe to justify calling this a leather soccer shoe, at least in my opinion anyways. Um, but other than that, I'm going to get to testing these out as soon as possible. Um, again, I will be getting in the blackout and whiteout colorways that have just been released very, very shortly, so stay tuned for those as well. They do feature some differences on the upper that may or may not improve the overall quality of the feel. Um, but other than that, if you guys are interested in any more information on these shoes, be sure to check out the review page on my website. going to be working on that full written review over the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that as well. If you have any questions regarding this shoe feel free to leave a comment down below and if you did enjoy today's video be sure to support it with a like subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest soccer gear you can find all of my social media information down below in the description and other than that guys hope you enjoyed today's video and as always thanks for watching